Uh, I'm pleased to have the opportunity to talk about this very important issue with everyone today. Uh, I, would, I would like to start by providing some background and some history as to where we have been on the issue of security controls uh, and, and also protecting the openness of research which is so critical to the advancement of science, the science that we do on our university campuses. And uh, Harry Truman once said, there's nothing new in the world except the history you don't know. And in fact, uh, when it comes to this set of issues, I often say we've, we've been here before, we've had similar concerns raised in the past, it's worth reviewing those. So I would like to start by taking everybody back to the late, well, you know, 1970s and 1980s. And um, if you go back to then, uh, you will recall that there was great concern about the Soviet U Union and, and that the relationship between the U.S. and the USSR had deteriorated to levels uh, that existed only in the Cold War back in the 1950s. And there was great concern at the time that the U.S. was losing its military and technological edge to the Soviet Union. And interestingly enough, there was a lot of concern that universities were in fact one of the key points of leakage. There were security officials who, who essentially referred to universities as the soft underbelly of the U.S. Uh, kind of defense enterprise that information was leaking from our universities and going to help the Soviet Union to advance their uh, military and, and you know essentially achieve superiority over the U.S. and that was the concern uh, at the time. The association that I work for, the Association of American Universities, which represents. 60 leading research universities in the United States, engaged the Department of Defense in a dialogue uh, on this issue and created something called the DOD University Forum. That forum not only addressed that, it also addressed are there, are there, um, are there things that should be done to train and help build a workforce, a domestic workforce that can support the Department of defense's needs, but a lot was built around this concern about security and how to both ensure the openness that was essential for science to advance, but also protect, you know, uh, technologies, scientific information that, that had nas significant national security implications. Um, building upon that, in the early 80s, the National Academies commissioned a report uh, that was the committee that oversaw that report was chaired by Dale Corson. He was then the president of Cornell University. And in 1982, they came out with a report on scientific communication and national security. And it really laid out the need again that science be open, that uh, that there were concerns that you can overly protect science and wall, if you wall in uh, too much information, it will hurt the ability to advance uh, science. 